Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video I just wanted to talk about tropes in lesbian media that are getting real old. Now, not all of these tropes are inherently negative, that's not always the case. However, even if a trope isn't inherently negative, if a certain narrative has been regurgitated time and time again, to the point where we're all noticing it, it might just be time to kind of break out of the box and, and move away from the same tired tropes, most of which are actually negative. So the first and most obvious trope that I'm going to start with is the dead lesbian. It is death. It is tale as old as time that lesbian romance must end in tragedy. I know people die in real life and death is a common theme in all media, not just lesbian media. However, for a long time, lesbians had no representation and the only representation that we had would always end in tragedy. And needless to say, I don't necessarily think it was healthy. Also, given the real life history of lesbian women, there are some really insidious undertones to killing off a lesbian character after she has engaged in a relationship with another woman. The writing's kind of on the wall with that one. The next trope is the coming out narrative. Now, there is nothing inherently wrong with a coming out story. We also need to remember that lesbians are not a homogenous group. There's a lot of lesbians from different cultural backgrounds, lesbians of different races, lesbians of different class, lesbians with disabilities, and coming out narratives can be a real lifeboat for some people. And a lot of these coming out stories offer positive representation, and I'm not saying that they're not important. However, there is more to being a gay person than coming out. Being gay doesn't begin and end with your coming out process, and the coming out process is something that will be with you for the rest of your life. I think what I'm saying is it's okay to move away from the coming out narratives or the coming to terms with my sexuality narratives. I've just noticed that it's something that tends to be regurgitated again and again, and instead of focusing on on lesbians as people or focusing on their relationships with other people. The whole narrative is just consumed on this turmoil over their sexuality and that gets in the way of telling other stories. Next we have the just good friends trope. <sighs> Quinn and Rachel, Zena and Gabrielle, Cordelia and Misty, rest in peace. I'm not saying that shows which portray female friendships are not important. That is incredibly important. But look, where there's obvious chemistry, why not just take it there? Because you know a lot of the time, if one half of the couple was male, the show probably would have taken it there. The predatory lesbian stereotype. The morally dubious lesbian who is just waiting to corrupt the poor innocent women by giving them a sense of self-worth and a an orgasm. Jokes aside, this trope is obviously toxic due to insidious real-life connotations that gay people were predatory. That is why the lesbian vampire is such a popular notion. Don't get bitten, otherwise you'll get sick and become one of them. However, the Carl Miller series did a pretty good job of taking this trope and transforming it into something positive. And uh, interesting to watch for science. The next trope is the token male love interest forward slash heterosexual relationships. No one is uh, tuning in or reading lesbian content for heterosexuality. There's so many films where we have to sit through some kind of pointless hetero scene and usually the women in the scene don't even want to because they're currently in love with another woman. I mean, nobody wants to see that, not even the straight people tuning in to watch, so please stop. And something I've noticed is very few pieces of lesbian media let women live in isolation from men. The next trope is lesbian media which embodies the male gaze. This is obviously a trope which comes as a result of a lack of actual lesbian input in lesbian works. Any intimacy between the women often swings between awkward to just straight up pornographic, sometimes echoing heterosexuality. And 
almost always a lot of us are just sat there with gritted teeth and it's incredibly cringeworthy to watch, it offers poor representation, there's a reason nobody likes blue is the warmest colour and it is because it is essentially a product of the male gaze, rendering it a piece of soggy bread. And the last trope which is incredibly irritating is the self-proclaimed lesbian character who still sleeps with or dates men. I think this is the most problematic trope of them all to be honest. Lesbianism is not malleable. Just use the word bisexual, just use the word queer. This trope completely invalidates lesbianism. I've seen this trope in shows such as Dear White People, it also crops up in the book Disobedience and it's incredibly annoying and frustrating to see a lesbian character stay in a heterosexual relationship or sleep with men, yet still use the lesbian label. Lesbians are already not really taken seriously and this is because women aren't taken seriously. And this trope is incredibly damaging. It's not even an exaggeration to say this literally leads to women being violated in real life. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of uncomfortable experiences I've had with being in a public space with my partner and then men thinking that we're there for them and of course this is a male entitlement problem and a misogyny problem, however when you're contributing to making lesbians seem malleable and almost as though it's something women pretend to be, I think it's really problematic. I guess that's just what happens when you don't have any actual lesbians involved in the creative process. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you have noticed any tropes in lesbian media that you're kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of over it, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!